Good evening, St. John's. I've noticed in the past couple days that I've had more feedback from my sermon on Sunday than I normally do. Uh, the sermon ended on the theme of forgiveness, so I thought maybe I'll talk a little bit more about forgiveness today, particularly the practicalities of it. And here's what I've observed. And I say this just based on my own observation. This isn't a established teaching about research with forgiveness. But so far as I could tell, there's three different um, contexts uh, for forgiveness, uh, you might say, uh, in terms of how easy it is to do it. The easiest person to forgive uh, is the person who's truly repentant in your presence, someone who comes before you, recognizes the wrong they've done, um, takes blame for it, and asks for your forgiveness. Gosh, when that happens, it's really easy to do, isn't it? Uh, because our soul wants to be in union. It wants restoration, and that's the full deal. That person wants to be in union with you, you with them, and uh, forgiveness is easily given in those situations, even uh, if it's been a pretty significant wrong. The next level I've found is that it's not so hard to forgive someone who's dead. <laughs> and I don't say this uh, cavalierly, what I mean by that is, when someone has died, they can no longer hurt you again. Uh, particularly in a relationship where it's a repeated pattern of abuse of some sort. Uh, a parent who just keeps on niggling at you in a certain way or knows how to sh shoot you down. Uh, or a sibling or something like that. It's hard to forgive them typically because the abuse keeps happening, but if they're dead, <laughs> they can't do it anymore. And I find it easier to forgive that person. Uh, at one level, maybe we start to mythologize that them. Um, maybe that's not so healthy. But at a deeper level, and maybe not unrelated to that, we can begin to see them from a bigger perspective. That this person is made in the image of God, they are returned to the image of God. Whatever their failings, whatever their sins, that season of their existence is over. They are now restored to union with God, and from that place, or in that place, we could offer them forgiveness. And should we try, we could begin to enter into a deeper mystical union with them. And then the third one, the hardest person to forgive, is the one who is not repentant and is still alive. That one could be really challenging. And on a practical note, here's what I've discovered about forgiveness. We can't conjure it up. We can desire it. We could recognize the worth of it. Uh, but that's just the first step. The actual act of forgiving can feel like it's beyond our control. So what I've begun doing uh, in this and any and other forms of prayer, I just lay before God what my desire is. God, I want to forgive this person. Or at another level, God, I want to be at peace with this person. And I just leave it there. And that's my prayer day after day. It could go on for weeks or months, maybe even more than a year. And what's nice about that kind of praying is we're not telling God exactly what God ought to do or how God ought to resolve it or what this forgiveness should look like. We're just saying, I see what the end goal is and it is shalom. It's peace and restoration and I want that. And then you entrust it to God. And what I have found is that over time, God is alive. <laughs> God answers prayer. What we're asking for, what we're yearning for, is the deep substance of the kingdom of God. And God makes it possible in God's way. I can't tell you what it will look like specifically, but I find this to be a good method of getting where we want to go. So let us pray, and we begin by reflecting on our day.
For the love shared, we are grateful. For provision and nurture, we are grateful. For kindness given, we are grateful. For the sorrow we've caused, we pray for forgiveness. For injustices ignored, we pray for forgiveness. For the encounters with God today and stranger and friend, we bid you welcome. For the encounters missed today, we know that you always see us, even when we don't see you. For tomorrow, may we see you in ways expected and unexpected. We welcome the darkness of the night. We make space for it and we mark our place in it. We remember that you, Jesus of Nazareth, lived through nights of consolation and desolation. And you walked into the nights of those people you met, inviting them to justice and truth, love and life. We welcome the night, and we welcome you into all our nights. We pray for those who work by night, whose day is marked by moon, cloud, and stars. And we pray for those whose nights are desolate, that they may have the consolation of prayer, peaceful solitude, and community. For a peaceful night, we pray. For a hopeful day, we pray. For a deeper generosity, we pray. A reading from Luke. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. We pray. Jesus, you praised work more than words, foundations more than fashion. May we find our foundation in the work of love, demanding, tiring, true, and human, and holy because love is the only foundation worth building on. Amen. Good night, Kick Harbor.